Welcome back to chapter 2 and we're moving right along. We're on section 2.4. We're going to talk about a library of functions and these are ones that you need to have memorized. And then finally a piecewise function. So here is our library of functions um, and what you really need to know is their graphs. So this one I'm pretty sure you know is just um, the same thing as y equals some number. This one is also a function you know. Um, remember y equals mx plus b. And the rest of these we're going to look at. The square root of x, the cube root of x, the absolute value of x, and I'm going to show you how to find that on your calculator. x squared, x cubed, and the inverse, 1 over x. And then the greatest integer functions. Okay, so let's get started by looking at our functions. The first one we're going to look at is the square function, f of x equals x squared. And in pre-calculus and calculus, we're going to be talking about domain and range. How I remember them is dr are in alphabetical order. Domain talks about the x-axis and range talks about the y-axis and x, y are both in alphabetical order. So let's look at our picture. Let's first talk about the domain. The domain, what we're doing is we're looking from 0, 0 to the left to negative infinity. And one thing we know is it doesn't matter where I am, this picture actually keeps going, whoops, keeps going and going and going to negative infinity. And the same thing is on the right side. If we continue out into the x positive direction, so does our picture. So it doesn't matter what positive x value we pick, we're always going to have a y number. So this tells us that our domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. If we look at our range, you'll notice that the range actually starts at the bottom at 0, 0. There's nothing below 0, 0 on the range. So the range is actually from 0 to infinity. Next, let's look at the cube function. So once again, we want to talk about domain, and we want to talk about the range. So let's talk about the domain first, the x-axis. So here we are at 0, 0. And our picture keeps going down, down, down. And actually, if we follow along the x-axis, once again, it doesn't matter what x value we choose, we're always going to have a point. So we know that the domain is going to go to negative infinity. And if we look to the right, we notice that the same happens on the positive side, positive infinity. So the domain will go from negative infinity to positive infinity. Let's look at our range this time. Once again, we're starting from 0, 0. You notice that this goes to positive infinity, or keeps going on and on in the y direction, I guess we could think about it. 0, 0, and it continues into the negative direction, negative infinity. So the range is negative infinity. So our range is negative infinity to positive infinity. Let's look at the square root function f of x equals the square root of x, and our domain, we're starting at 0, 0, and we notice if we're looking at the x-axis, nothing happens to the left of 0, 0. So the domain actually starts at 0, and it goes to infinity, and our range turns out to be the same thing. If we think about the y-axis, there's nothing under 0, 0, so it starts at 0 because it includes 0, and that goes to positive infinity. Here's the, cube root Here's the cube root function, and if we look at our domain, once again, we start at 0, 0, and it goes to negative infinity, and it actually goes to positive infinity. If we look at our y-axis, we notice the same thing happens. It goes to negative infinity to positive infinity. The reciprocal function, f of x equals 1 over x, this is a little different. The reciprocal function, f of x equals 1 over x, and this is a little different. If we look here, this is going to negative infinity, but it's never going to reach the x-axis. And the same is here, it's going to keep going to negative infinity, but it's never, well, it's going to get really, really close to 0 here, but it's never going to reach it. This one is going to get really, really, really close to 0, but it's never going to reach it. And this goes to negative infinity. So that's how 
So that's how we're going to define the domain and the range. The domain comes from negative infinity and goes to zero, but it does not include zero, so that's why I have a parenthesis here. And then it's going to go from zero to positive infinity. The range is the same thing. It's actually going to come up from negative infinity and go to zero, but does not include zero, and then start from zero and go to positive infinity. The absolute function, f of x equals the absolute value of x. Absolute functions will always have a v-shape. The domain of this function, we notice that it goes from negative infinity to positive infinity. And it does include zero, zero, because zero, zero is a point. The range for this function is actually zero. Sorry about that, it actually does include zero, so we need to put a bracket there to infinity. So before we get too far, I do want to show you how to put this on your calculator. So the absolute value of x, we go into y equals, we're going to click math, we're going to go over to number, and abs is absolute value, so we're going to hit enter, and we just want the absolute value of x, and we're going to graph it. And there's our graph of the absolute value of x. The last function we're going to look at is the greatest integer function. f of x equals int of x. The greatest integer less than or equal to x. In other words, a greatest integer function rounds any number down to the nearest integer. Now it might seem a little confusing, but let me show you how it works. If we're at 2, it includes 2. And it includes anything above 2 up to 3, but it doesn't include 3. So let's make an xy table for that. I'm, so once again, let's say x is 2. When x is 2, since that's an integer, your y value will be 2. Let's say we pick x to be 2.1. Remember, the greatest integer is less than or equal to x, or to 2. So that's also going to be 2. And that's how we get the constant line. If I go to 2.9, it's still going to be 2. It's going to be 2 until we get to 3. And 3 will be 3 because that's our next integer. Let me show you how this works on the calculator. First we're going to go to, and then we need to put the greatest integer function in there. So we're going to click math. We're going to go over to number. And down here at 5 is int. That's what we want. So you can either down arrow or click 5. We want the greatest integer of x, and we're going to graph. So here's our picture. Now I want to show you the table. The first thing I actually did was to change my table set into 0.25, which means every quarter it's going to give me a point, because it's easier to show this. So let me go into the table. Now here's 1. And remember, all the way up until 2, it's going to be 1, so one point, one and a quarter, one and a half, one and three fourths, it's still going to be one. And so that's why it gives us our constant line. Once we hit two, everything's going to be two. Everything's going to be two until we get to three. And you'll notice that it continues. Everything's going to be three until we get up to four. The last topic of this section is a piecewise function. In mathematics, a piecewise defined function, also called a piecewise function, is a function whose definition changes depending on the value of the independent variable. This comes right from Wikipedia, and I think this is the easiest definition for us. I always think of a piecewise function as being in pieces. So let's look at So here's an example of a piecewise function, and you'll notice that our graph is in pieces. Once again, we're going to talk about the domain and range. The domain, remember, is your x values. So if I go all the way over here, it actually starts at 6, but does not include 6. So that's why we have a parenthesis, 6. And you'll notice that our function continues. We still have, even though this is an open circle, there's a closed circle here. So negative 2 is included. The same thing for 2. We have an open circle, but we do have a closed circle here. So 2 is included. We go up to 5. 
once again open circle but 5 has a closed circle so it's included and it goes to 7. Since it's an open circle it does not equal 7. So that is actually our domain. Our range remember we're looking at the y-axis so it looks like the lowest points we have here are at 1. Since I do have a value here and a value here at 1, that's why it includes it, includes negative 1. We're talking about the negative here. Now we're going to go up. We do have something here at 4, but we also have a number here at 5. Since it is an open circle, it does not include 5. And that's actually our range. Let's look at this one. Um, very similar, except for now our domain starts at negative 7 and includes negative 7. We still have a point, still have a point, and goes to positive 7. But our range is a little goofy here. So let's look at our, our negative side for our y values. It looks like it starts here at negative 4.5 and does not include it, so that's why there's a parentheses. And it's going to go, keep going, and we have a point here at negative 1. And then we have a point here at 0, but we don't have anything else in there. So that's why the range goes from negative 4.5 to negative 1. Now it includes negative 1 because we have this closed, closed circle. Then it starts up again at 0, and it goes to positive 4. So our range is going to be negative 4.5 to negative 1, includes negative 1. Now this book used a comma. We use u for union to say we're going to unite these two together and it starts at 0, includes 0, and goes to 4. Let's do this piecewise function together. Now when we look at it we have actually two functions going on here. We're going to follow this function for when x is less than 1. When x becomes 1 or greater, we're going to use this function. So I'm going to make my xy table, and I think it's the easiest to make your xy table. So when x is 1, I still need to know what this is, because I'm going to have an open circle there. I'll just pay, make a note here, an open circle for this one. 1 squared is 1, minus 1 is negative 1. When I have negative 1, because remember here x has to be less than 1, negative 1 squared is 1, minus 2 is negative 1, put negative 2 in there, negative 2 squared is 4, minus 2 is 2, negative 3, negative 3 squared is 9, minus 2 is negative 7, sorry, positive 7, and I think that's pretty good. So let's graph what we have so far. We have 1, negative 1. Now remember that's an open circle. We have negative 1, negative 1, negative 2, 2, negative 3, 7, and so on. Since we know that this is a parabola, it's going to look something like that. Ah! All right, that's a little better. Now remember this is an open circle. Now let's do the second function. We're going to start at 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. Sorry about that, that shouldn't be in there. We're going to do 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. Put 3 in there. 3 plus 1 is 4. And so on. Remember, x is greater than or equal to 1. So let's graph that side. At 1, we're going to have 2. And it includes it. Remember, x is greater than or equal to 1. Then we have 2, 3, 3, 4, oops, sorry about that, 3, 4, and my line. Hopefully you are drawing a straight line, but this is what it's going to look like. Let's do this piecewise function on the calculator. Now remember, sometimes it's easier just to do it by hand than putting it on the calculator, but it's kind of nice to know that you did it by hand correctly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this a little bigger. So in here, you're going to see all the keystrokes that I'm pressing. Remember, you can pause or rewind at any time. So the first thing we need to do is put the first function in, x squared minus 2. Next, we need to put x is less than 1. So x 
To get less than, we need to go into test. So second math gets us into the test, and we want number five because that's less than. And it's x is less than one, end parentheses. Now that's our first function. We're going to add the next function. So parentheses, x plus one, end of parentheses. Now remember this one is x is greater than or equal to one. So x, we go back into our test, second, math, and this time it's greater than or equal to one, which is four, one, end of parentheses, and graph. And look, the graph on our calculator is exactly like the graph on our picture. So now you're ready to start the 2.4 homework. Remember, if you have any questions, email me or Skype during my regular office hours or Sunday nights from 8 to 10 when I'll be answering just pre-calc questions.